Hello to all students. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss osmoregulation in fish. And in this video lecture, we are going to discuss two types of fishes, freshwater fishes and marine fishes. So first of all, to understand this topic, we have to know some terminology. The first terminology is hypotonic. Hypotonic means hypo mean less tonic mean solute such a solution such a water which contain less amount of solutes or salts is known as hypotonic for example i have taken a beaker which contain 100 ml of water and i have added 5 gram of salts in this water and dissolve it completely now this water this solution contains very little amount of salt so that is why this solution is known as hypotonic. If we put an animal cell in this solution, water tends to enter inside the cell and uh, the cell will burst due to the higher pressure of the water. So this is very dangerous for those animals who live in fresh water because fresh water is usually hypotonic. The second term is hypertonic. Hyper means more, tonic means solutes or salts. So I have taken an example right over here. I have taken a beaker which contain 100 ml water and contain 20 gram of salt, which is a very high concentration of salt in this solution. So if we put an animal cell in this solution, the water tends to move out of their body. Exosmosis and shrinkage of cells leads to the death of the animal cell. So this kind of environment is present in marine environment. So animals living in marine environment, hypotonic environment have some adaptation to survive in such a condition. There is a third term which is known as isotonic. Iso means same, tonic means solute. Such a solution contain moderate amount of solutes. If we put an animal cell inside this isotonic solution, water neither will enter the cell nor leaves the cell. So though both conditions are isotonic and uh, this solution will not harm the animal cell. Now let's move on to the fishes which live in fresh water. As you know that fresh water includes lakes, ponds, rivers, canals, etc. Their water is hypotonic and also known as stenohaline. Steno means narrow, haline means salt because this water contains very little amount of solute or salts in this water. Fish living in fresh water faces some problems while living in fresh water because water tends to move inside their body cells all across their body. As a result, their body cells gain lot of water and which can leads to the bursting of the living cells and leads to the death of the fish. So such fish, they have some adopted some adaptations to survive in such kind of environment. So what are those adaptations? First of all, these fish do not eat, do not drink water because already water is entering constantly in their body through osmosis, which is endosmosis. They only eat food, which is algae or insects and a small amount of water along with the food can enter in their body, which can be removed from the body. So their gills, they absorb water from their blood and remove into the atmosphere, into the environment. And also their gills absorb salts and put them into the blood so that loss of salt can be prevented. Their kidneys, they are special. They are glomerular kidneys. If you look at right over here, this is a Bowman's capsule of the nephron, which contain blood capillaries in the form of glomerulus, and they have short nephron tubule. This glomerulus contain blood, and from blood, maximum of amount of water is taken out and uh, released as a urine, and minimum amount of water is reabsorbed from this tubule. So salts are retained in the body while water is removed from the kidneys. 
So they produce hypoosmotic urine which contain very few amounts of salts but large amount of water. So such a urine is very dilute and is in large quantity. So along with the urine there, there is a, some loss of ions. These ion loss of ions can be compensated by help of food which contains some salts and also by active transport of salt through gills into the blood so that the salts can be uh, compen compensated. So along, uh, according to these adaptation, these fish are able to survive in fresh water. Let's summarize this whole process right over here. First of all, freshwater fish, they live in hypotonic medium. Freshwater is hypotonic means less salts and more water. Their body is hyperosmotic. Their body contain more salt as compared to their environment. So their body is hyperosmotic. So what will happen? Their body will gain water. The endosmosis will take place. They produce hypotonic urine, very dilute urine and very in large quantity which contain most of the water from the body so that they can remove excess water from the body. Their kidneys contain glomerular nephron so that maximum uh, removal of water can take place. They do not drink water. This fish does not drink water because already water is flooding their bodies. Water tends to enter in the, inside the body endosmosis. They retain salts and remove water. So these are main adaptations which uh, uh, are very crucial for the survival of these fishes in fresh water. And usually these are teleos fishes. Now let's move on to the marine fishes. Marine fishes uh, are those fishes which live in hypertonic environment which contain more salts and less water. These fishes live in an environment which is known as urihaline. Uri mean wide, haline means salt. It means that they contain, their environment contain a large amount of salts inside the water where they live. So what will happen in hypertonic environment, water will leave their body. Exosmosis will take place and their body becomes shrink and as a result the fishes die. So they have to adopt some adaptation to survive such in condition. So what are those adaptation? Number one, they are going to retain water and they are going to remove salts. How this will happen? Number one, they will eat food and also drink a lot of sea water to compensate the loss of water from their body. Because they are drinking too much sea water and sea water also contain so much sea salts, so their body will increase in salt concentration. So these organisms, these fishes, have adaptation to remove excessive salt from their body. Their gills removed sodium and chloride ion from the blood and removed into the water. Water is also removed, water is also absorbed in, uh, remo uh, entered in, uh, uh, into the bloodstream from the gills so that the concentration of water can be maintained in the blood. Their digestive system also can try to absorb maximum water and remove salt from their digestive system. They also contain, uh, some fishes uh, also contain rectal glands. These are specialized glands present near rectum which, uh, which absorb a maximum amount of salt and remove the salt through cloaca. Their kidneys are, have special nephrons which are aglomerular nephrons. Aglomerular nephrons are those nephrons which do not contain glomerulus. They have long tubule, nephron tubule, such, an, uh, such a nephron absorb maximum amount of salts and removed from the fish while water is retained inside the body. So their kidney absorb maximum salt from blood, magnesium sulfate uh, are, absorbed, are absorbed from the blood and removed from the uh, body with the help of kidneys. So these fishes produce isoosmotic urine or hyperosmotic urine which contain maximum amount of salts from their body and very little amount of water. So their water, their urine is in small volume which contain ions, magnesium, sulfate, calcium and phosphate which have been taken out from the body. So if we look at the summary of adaptations of marine fishes, first of all their, their environment is hypertonic 
their medium where they, they are these fishes are living contain maximum amount of salt their body is hypoosmotic these fishes have hypoosmotic body means that they contain less amount of salt as compared to their medium or environment so water tends to move out from their body which is ex osmosis hyperotonic urine they produce hypertonic urine in scanty amount in very small amount hypertonic urine contain large amount of salt and less amount of water their kidneys contain a glomerular nephron so that water cannot be removed from the body and can be retained inside the fish they drink lot of water their body removes ex osmosis uh, water removes from their body through ex osmosis so to maintain a um, balance of the water they drink lot of water so these fishes remove salts from their body and retain water there are some other groups of fishes present in uh, sea water like cartilaginous fish including sharks and re and rays etc they have maintained such a concentration of salts inside their body that they do not have to do osmoregulation so these uh, fishes are known as osmo conformers some fish they have they do not have uh, this kind of osmo regulation or adaptation so they tends to raise amount of urea in their body to balance the amount of salt inside the body according to their environment so that their body can become isotonic to the medium or environment so it so that they do not have to do osmo regulation because osmo regulation requires lot of energy lot of adaptations but urea retaining urea inside the body is also very uh, harmful because urea can damage uh, many enzymes inside the body so these kind of group of fishes retain another chemical which is known as tmo trimethyl amine oxide which uh, protect the enzymes and the body from the harmful effects of the urea so anyhow there are different groups of fishes Uh, which live in uh, marine water and they have slightly different types of osmo regulation osmo regulatory adaptations inside their environment that's all for today and hopefully see you in the next lecture until then bye